Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. Welcome to the August 2023 CTSS quiz. It's hard to believe we're in August. August means the summer is almost over. August means we go back to college soon. Wait a second. We don't go back to college. But anyway, you know what I mean. It's the last half of the summer. And I have 10 great cases for that last half of the summer. In this case, the most likely diagnosis is... Well, what do I recognize here? I see a mass in the right periodic region. You can see it very nicely, particularly on the coronal view, it's very vascular. This could be lymphoma, but that would not be vascular. Castleman's disease can be solid and mildly vascular. That's a consideration. A pheochromocytoma and a paraganglioma are the same. When it occurs, in the adrenal, it's a pheo, typically, right? Or it can be extra adrenal pheos, but neuroendocrine tumors, paraganglioma. So the best diagnosis in this case is a paraganglioma. The least likely diagnosis in this case, the first thing I notice is cirrhotic liver. Then I see a large mass that's vascular on early phase and washes out in venous phase. The mass is in part exophytic. Hepatoma, cholangiocarcinoma, and metastatic disease are all considerations because when you look at this case, you know this is a malignancy. Because it's a hypervascular mass and it's a cirrhotic liver, the most likely diagnosis is going to be hepatoma. Cholangios tend to be hypovascular. Mets can occur, of course, from almost any primary. Things like renal cell, things like GIST can be hypervascular. But the one thing we know this is not, and the least likely diagnosis, is hemangioma. Remember, hemangiomas have peripheral puddling, and also our rule, we never diagnose a hemangioma in a patient with cirrhosis of the liver. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, I see a large infiltrating mass involving the stomach. Could it be involving the pancreas or rising from the pancreas? That's a consideration. The mass has punctate calcifications, which makes me think of a mucinous tumor. And in the image on the right, you see implants on both the right and left flank, greater on the left than the right. Lymphoma does not give you those implants. It usually doesn't give you calcifications, but can give you a bulky gastric mass. Just tumors are typically exophytic, not the best appearance. And ovarian cancer at times can be confused, right? You get Krukenberg tumors where you get stomach to ovary, but you get ovary to stomach as well. And that can confuse you at times with ovarian cancer or primary gastric cancer. And remember, ovarian cancer also gives you implants. But when all is said and done, the most likely diagnosis is a mucinous gastric adenocarcinoma with omental caking and carcinomatosis. The least likely diagnosis in this case, what you can see here is a large left pleural effusion, there's narrowing of the right main stem bronchus, there's adenopathy, there's dense consolidation. When I say what's the least likely diagnosis, COVID pneumonia. COVID typically does not have adenopathy. COVID typically does not have pleural effusions, and you have patchy ground glass infiltrates, not solid consolidation. This appearance in this case is more likely going to be malignancy. It could be lymphoma, which in fact it was. Sarcoid's a thought, but I don't like pleural effusions with sarcoid. And fibrosing metastinitis. Often you will see calcifications, and I don't see anything to suggest fibrosing metastinitis. But the least likely diagnosis is COVID pneumonia. The most likely diagnosis in this case well, what do I see in the axial images? I see a large mass, and I recognize from the coronal the mass is in the adrenal, and it's growing up the IVC into the right atrium. Things that grow up can be renal cell, adrenal, or hepatoma. But here we have a primary adrenal mass, classic primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. You could think about lymphoma. Lymphoma is usually bilateral, doesn't involve or invade the vessels. Pheochromocytomas are usually vascular. Mets have a range of appearances. Occasionally they can go to the IVC, though that's rare. The least likely diagnosis in this case is, 
I see a large cystic mass by the tail of the pancreas. The mass has solid nodular components. I know by looking at the cystic and solid nature of this, it's going to be a malignancy. And in fact, because it's cystic with solid components and its location, this was a mucidous cystic neoplasm with high-grade dysplasia. Could it be an IPMN with malignant transformation? It would be a pretty big IPMN, but it could be. Could it be a pancreatic cancer that's necrotic? Can be something like an acinar cell. That's a possibility. Or just an adenocarcinoma with necrosis. Possibility. The one thing this is not is a serous cyst adenoma. Serous cyst adenomas can be cystic purely. They can be cystic with nodularity. They can be multiple cysts. At times, they can even have a solid component and the entire lesion be solid. But a cystic lesion with dense nodularity, this is a malignancy. And it's not a serous cyst adenoma, which is the least likely diagnosis. The least likely diagnosis in this case, well, what I see is something abnormal in the right colon. You can see the TI coming into there. We can argue whether this is lymphoma or carcinoma of the cecum or even a tumor of the ileum, be it lymphoma or carcinoma growing into the cecum. All of those are good possibilities. The one thing this is not is undistended normal colon. Yes, at times you can overcall the presence of disease. You can undercall as well as overcall, truthfully. But here you see a solid mass, which shows nicely on both the axial and the coronal. And at the end of the day, this ended up being lymphoma involving the terminal ileum and the cecum. But this was not going to be a normal colon. The least likely diagnosis in this case, I see a solid mass in the patient's right kidney. It's vascular. It washes out. It's irregular. This is not going to be an oncocytoma in all likelihood, though oncocytoma is a variable. We can argue as a papillary or clear cell. Most clear cells measure over 100 Hounsfield units. This is fairly vascular, and I would go with clear cell. Papillary usually is under 90 Hounsfield units. At times, I've seen vascular papillary, and size alone is not an issue. Size, big masses can be papillary or clear cell. The reality is this was a clear cell, but the one thing this is not is a Bosniak 3 cyst. This is a solid mass. There's a little bit of cystic component. This is a malignancy, and that's really simple enough, and it was a clear cell, renal cell carcinoma. And so the least likely diagnosis was a Bosniak 3 cyst. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, great case. In the mesentery, there's a large, low-density mass shown nicely on axial and on the coronal images. Could it be a pseudocyst? It doesn't look like a pseudocyst of the pancreas. Cirrocyst adenoma, the pancreas is above it. This looks like it's primary in the mesentery. Mucinous cystic neoplasm, again, the same thought. This is in the mesentery. And there are a number of mesenteric masses from lymphoma, which is solid, low density, lymphangiomas are possibilities. This was a mesenteric lymphangioma, just a very nice example. The most likely differential diagnosis in this case includes, well, what am I seeing? I'm seeing a mass in the left lower quadrant. The mass is somewhat vascular on arterial phase and washes out on venous phase. It could be Castleman's disease, solid masses, mildly vascular. A solitary fibrous tumor has a range of appearances, often as vascular as well, often as larger. Lymphoma can be a solitary mass in the mesentery. What do you favor? Well, I favor Castleman's disease. A solid mass, no adenopathy, nothing anywhere else, vascular and washes out. So the answer is the most likely differential diagnosis includes all of these. If I asked you to pick one answer, I would have gone with Castleman's. Anyway, that's the end of the 10 cases. What a great start to the month of August. I hope you enjoyed the cases. I hope you learned something. I hope you got them all right. But again, we're here to learn. We're here to teach. We're here to learn. And... I'm have a great day.
If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.